But now with Disney buying up everything, what is your pipe dream for David? Like, where would you hypothetically love to see him placed within the MCU? Who would you love to see him go toe to toe with? What's, what's, what's the dream and could it happen? It's a tricky question. We don't need Dan, seriously, I've always wanted to talk with you, man. I'm such a fan. So seriously, thank you for fitting me into your schedule. I appreciate thank it. Time. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to jump into this. You know, I am so fascinated by the difference between an actor playing a human and then playing, this feels like a, a weird word, like for lack of a better word, a robot. And you've spent your entire career trying to understand human emotions and what it takes to feel different things. So what is the opposite of that? What is the hardest thing for you to unlearn about being a human in order to pull off this performance? Well, it was exactly that really. It was, it was a sort of process of unlearning and really actually actively studying human behavior because, you know, bear in mind, this isn't an Android who's just content with being an Android like C-3PO or something, you know, he's actually trying to become a mensch, a human, you know, and, and a better man for Alma. So he's, He's listening and learning and calibrating. And he's also been pre-programmed with some human, you know, cheesy chat up lines and some moves, you know, but they're not quite right. So a lot of it was studying the expected or traditional human behavior or response or gesture or mannerism in this particular moment, and then kind of unpicking it, deconstructing that, and maybe playing like two thirds of a, of a movement that is just like, oh, yeah. wait, that's not quite. Just enough quite to kind of like throw you off a little bit. Exactly. Oh, it's fascinating. I, honestly, in another genre, I could have seen him like a boy, like an alien, as like one of the androids, uh, you know, in, in part of that crew. Like, if, right, if, it, yeah. were, if it were a different film. Exactly. Yeah. And, the, and there are, you know, it's almost a genre in itself, the kind of, you know, the outsider who's dropped into the modern world, whether it's a caveman or yeah. a spaceman or Wonder Woman or, or whatever, you know, and it's like, okay, well, they've got to, you know, find their way in this, in this weird world. And um, it's very much in that kind of vein. For sure. Um, you know, I want to talk about the fact that this film is, to use kind of an antiquated term, it's, it's a foreign film. And I, I can't tell you how often I have to beg my friends and family to watch a film with subtitles just because they can't get over the fact that it's not in English. But Alfonso Cuaron made an Oscar speech a few years ago um, that I loved where he pointed out that every film is a foreign film to someone. For him, Star Wars and Jaws were foreign films. Do you think that people are coming around to films that aren't in their own language? And, and do you find it sometimes a struggle in your own life to get people to watch like foreign films? I mean, I think it's a struggle to get people to watch anything, frankly. And, this is and true. Um, this is I true. think um, I think that the term international feature is now yes, preferred. That is, yes, you know, that is, yeah, because, yes. Because you're right. Um, you know, most of, uh, you know, a, a huge part of our industry are people working in their second language, working in English and, you know, are making a lot of great cinema in their own first language. And, you know, this was, uh, I, I've done one other film in, in German, but this was really um, the first sort of major role fully in German that I'd ever undertaken and it was an amazing experience and it was a delight to find a story and a screenplay of this quality um in any language frankly you know and um so yeah i think uh, you know the appetite for international work uh is is uh, has definitely grown over the last few years with streaming services and you know whether it's a danish show or a norwegian crime drama or something you know people are watching those things now um and there's terrific stuff from from all over the world and i think it's it's great for you know, it's great for actors worldwide that they get, you know, to be seen around the world. Um, but it really, you know, for audiences, you know, you get to broaden your horizons and, and open yourself up to stories that you might not otherwise have heard. You're absolutely right. I think you look at this film and you look at Parasite and Roma, and I do think people are becoming more accepting of international features. And I, I apologize for using that antiquated term. That was, that was the, I know that was the absolute wrong term to use. Um, if you don't mind, I want to wrap up by, by having a quick geek out session with you, because I told you I'm such a fan of yours and a fan, I'm a fan of the show Legion. And, uh, and I know, uh, you know, at the time when you signed on, Legion had nothing to do with the MCU, Fox still very much owned X-Men, uh, but now with Disney buying up everything, what is your pipe dream for David? Like, where would you hypothetically love to see him placed within the MCU? Who would you love to see him go toe to toe with? What's, what's, what's the dream? And could it happen? It's a tricky question that because, you know, as an Omega level mutant, uh, there's not many people who could really defeat him or, or give him a run for his money. That's why I want to see it. I mean, but it would just be too easy. He would just sort of waltz in there and, it, you know, it'd be a very short movie or episode. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, as he's popped up in the in the comics over the years, the appearance of David Haller, you know, every 10 years, someone has a run at that, at that storyline and that character because it is so delightful. And, and I think for comic book artists, it's so visually rich. Um, every time he shows up, things get really, really weird uh, and, you know, kind of delightfully so. So if 
he were to be reintroduced, uh, you can expect some some real weirdness and some some visual delights. <laughs> I'll, I'll call. I'll get Kevin Feige on the phone. You and I will. The, between the two of us, we'll make it happen. Uh, Dan, always good to see you. One of my favorite jokes. I always tell whenever people tell me, "Oh, you look like Dan Stevens," I always say, "Oh, so you mean I look like an ugly version of Dan Stevens?" That's <laughs> that's that's one of my favorite go-to lines. Thanks for chatting with me, man. Congratulations on this. It's a real pleasure. Jake, Thank good to you see you, buddy. Much. Oh, we're going, we don't need roads.